everyone to Sports Sunday. I'm BJ Milliken alongside Jen Chapman. Jen, a big week out in Hoover for SEC Media Days. That's right. We got a chance to talk to football players and coaches, which is always fun. Sports Director Gary Harris caught up with Alabama Center Ryan Kelly about the upcoming season. Indeed, I'm with Alabama Senior Center Ryan Kelly. And Ryan, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Senior, already. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Uh, 2011, I mean, it seems like it was forever ago, but at the same time, it flies by. So, um, you know, just really trying to make the most out of this year and, and take it all in for one last time. You came in here as a freshman in Alabama, achieved its goal, which is to win the national championship. Then in 2012, 2013, you really get your hearts ripped out, you know, in the Iron Bowl, cost you a chance. And then last year in the national semifinal, you've won one, I know, but do you feel like you've got, as a senior particularly, you got unfinished business? Yeah, you know, in 2011, I didn't play in that game, you know, so at the same time I was a part of the team, I didn't feel like I necessarily earned the national championship ring. Um, 2007, or 2012, I played the last four the four last four last plays of the uh, national championship game, so, but still it's not there. And then I feel like the last two times, the last two years that I've started, you know, we haven't finished the way we want to. So I take it personally and, um, you know, really looking forward to, to changing that this year. Offensively, last year, Coach Saban pointed out in the media room, you set records program records, but he said he thought something got lost, maybe in the terms of the physicality. In the past, Alabama lined up, pretty much said, this is what we're going to do. We know what we're going to do. You know what we're going to do. Do something about it. Yeah. Want to get back to that? Absolutely. Um, I think Coach Saban, or Coach Saban and Coach Kiffin together, um, you know, while we while we, we kind of got away from the run game last year, I think we were more passing. I think this year we're probably more of a balance. Um, but at the same time, you know, we can never let that happen again to where, you know, we – Get away from what, who we are. You know, we're Alabama. This is, we, we became Alabama because of what we do. We, we ran the ball. Nobody can stop us. And um, that's the identity we're trying to get back. Is that a team that, you know, everybody fears and no one wants to play? I have to ask you about the quarterback situation. I know everybody says, uh, well, it, it doesn't matter. But, but, I mean, obviously it does matter. you got to have one. Last year, Blake stepped in and did the job. How do you feel about that position this year? And, and who do you think will ultimately wind up being the, the starting quarterback? You know, I feel very confident in whoever is going to be back there. Um, last year, we were in the same situation. You know, was it going to be Blake? Was it going to be Jake? Nobody knew until the very, you know, the very pretty much the first game of the season. And the season, and then you know, after that, you know, it wasn't really until after the Arkansas game that we came together as a team. So, um, I don't think that there should be any worry on who it's going to be. You know, Coach Saban is going to obviously with with Coach Kiffin, they're going to pick who they want. And uh, I know that whoever there's whoever's going to be back there, commanding the huddle and and uh, throwing the ball that that every player, every other 10 people on the team are gonna, on the field are gonna feel just as confident. So um, you know, they're all great guys. I can't say enough about all five of them. They're competitors, um, they're team players, and uh, that's only one on quarterback. Last thing, you don't have Amari Cooper, but you've got Kenyon Drake. I told him, I said this for the record, he doesn't go down against Ole Miss, I think you win that game. He doesn't go down, I think you, you run the table. Mm -hmm. What kind of difference maker can he be in Lane Kiffin's offense for you? I mean, he's huge. Um, talk about a dual threat guy who can just do a lot with his feet. And I don't know if you guys realize, but he's, he's just he bulked up a little bit, so he's a little bit heavier. And, I, and he's still running just as good. Um, talk about a guy who's just overcome adversity to the max. And um, you, know, just, you couldn't be more proud of a guy like that, especially a guy who's as much of a team player as he is. So uh, I'm really happy for him. And I know we're, we're going to be better off without him. Or better off with him. Sorry. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan Kelly, he's been on a national championship team as a backup. He's been the starting center on an SEC championship team. Now he wants to finish his career with his own national championship as the starting center for the Crimson Tide. Back to you guys. Thanks, Gary. More SEC Media Day coverage is coming up in about four minutes on Sports Sunday. It's part two of my one-on-one -on -one with Paul Feinbaum. He shares his favorite callers to the show with us, so stay tuned for that. Before we get there, the Atlanta Braves were trying to win the series against your favorite team, the Chicago Cubs. That's right. I do bleed cubby blue, but I'll put that aside and be professional to do these highlights. Here we go. Let's look at him. There's the man himself. That's Cub skipper Joe Madden. He was happy to see the man child. Jorge Soler goes bam bam on this pitch in the third. That's a two run shot. It's three zip cubbies. Good guys. Jake Arietta was getting it done on the mound as well. Seven innings of three hit ball for him with 10 Ks. Cubbies win four to one and take the series against the Bravos. <laughs> NASCAR is lauded, and I'm no expert, but I'm guessing you don't no. want your car to catch on fire. That's bad. Take Alex it back to the Bauman shop. gets a little hot under the fire suit. Speaking of hot, how about Kyle Busch? He wins his third race in the last four. It's his second win in New Hampshire as he inches closer to a spot in the chase. And he gets that lobster. 
Hey, Dustin Johnson came into Sunday as your third round leader at the British Open, but he really could not get things going today. He bogeyed 17. Johnson finished with a 75, five shots off the lead. But how about Jordan Spieth going for his third major in a row? He charged up the leaderboard today with a 66, one off the lead. But the story of the day belongs to UAB Blazers golfer and amateur Paul Dunn. He shoots a 66 to head into the Monday's final round, tied for the lead at 12 under. I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself. You know, if there's a full round of golf tomorrow to play. We don't know what the weather will throw at us. And hopefully I can go out and just business as usual, play well. But uh, we'll see, you know, I can't really control anything but picking my targets, committing to my swings. That's all I'm going to focus on. Now Dunn is trying to become the first amateur to win the Open since Bobby Jones way back in 1930. Jordan Spieth attempting, of course, to win golf's version of the Grand Slam by winning his third major of the year. Alabama golfer Robbie Shelton also doing some big things as an amateur. He finished third at the PGA Barbasol event over in Opelika. A good golf weekend for the state of Alabama and still more Sports Sunday coming up. When we return, it's part two of my one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Paul Feinbaum. He shares one of his favorite callers with us. That's next, so stick around. We're back on Sports Sunday. Last night we showed you part one of Jen Chapman's one-on-one -on -one with Paul Feinbaum. Tonight we're going part two where he talks about some of his favorite callers, including one right here in Tuscaloosa. But Phyllis did become one of those callers people know, just like Jim from Tuscaloosa. There's the regulars. For you, is there a regular that you maybe isn't your favorite, but you do enjoy when they call in and they give some insight to your show? Well, I wrote a book last year, and uh, on page 54 of the book, I know this because it's come up so often, uh, Jim from Tuscaloosa, uh, I wrote that if I had Barack Obama on one line, uh, talking to him as an interview, and I saw that Jim was on the other line, I would hang up on the president. And what I meant by that is that he has been the most compelling caller. Um, I, I've never met him, although we have had some private conversations. And, you know, we've had difficult times. He's left the show. Um, he's come back. But I, I do like callers that move the audience. And, and he never calls in just, just to say, how are you? He calls in because he believes strongly and he is passionate about something, and, and that to me makes a great show. Have you met any of the, your callers? Oh, yeah, no, I met a lot of them. Uh, over the years, we uh, we used to have a luncheon, um, and invited the callers to the luncheon, and you know, through various means, I've met many of them. And to me, the most unique part about the callers is the fact that because of Twitter, because of Facebook, and, and other means, the callers now communicate with each other. They, uh, we had a guy named uh, Johnny from Coleman, calls in, big Alabama fan. I walked in our, our uh, room here earlier today and there were, there were three dozen donuts. He had brought them up. Uh, I went down and found them, we brought them up and uh, he really enjoyed it. I mean, he got, it was, it's enabled, but he, you know, he's, he's talking to Phyllis. Phyllis is talking to, to one, and, and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not here to brag and boast, but I don't think there's another show in America that has callers uh, having lunch and dinner with one another and Facebooking and, and tweeting. Uh, to me, it's unique. And it was already a popular show in the SEC, but when it went national, I know this year I worked in the Wisconsin market previously. I got some questions when Alabama was going to play Ohio State. They said, are those callers real? They started to tune into the show to hear what Alabama fans were saying, and they really questioned, are those real callers? Do you get that question, and can you address, are they real? They are real. Uh, I get it all the time, uh, Jen, and to me, uh, you, you hear it's, it, it's not often. I mean, sometimes, I mean, you, you can be driving around the country and put the show on, and uh, it, it, it is crazy, and sometimes, if not a lot of the times, it's over the top. But, I mean, we get real people calling in. Uh, during the, uh, the Penn State controversy a couple of years ago, Joe Paterno, we had a lady that called in and admitted that she had... Uh, been raped. Uh, others have called in and said they have been abused. I mean, to me, that's what separates it. Uh, it it's hard to uh, to develop that because we are, you are, but now that we're on television, you're in a hurry. You don't have as much time, but uh, it, anyone who doesn't think it's real uh, has never listened to the show. How has TV changed the show, if at all? Well, it affects it because you, you do, whether you want to or not, uh, you're cognizant of, of, of what's going out, what's being disseminated on television. And you, you just can't sit there slouched over 
uh, making an airline reservation like I used to sometimes during calls. Uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at a camera. And even though on uh, the little known secret in television, they always say, don't pay attention to the camera. You're in television. You have to pay attention to the camera. Are there any regrets then with making it go national? No. I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there are days uh, that I sit around and uh, really miss very much uh, my time in Alabama. But it, it's also an opportunity. I mean, I, I'm not 25 years old where uh, I may have multiple opportunities ahead. I, I mean, I, this was it for me. I, I took an opportunity to go to ESPN to work for the best company uh, in, in our business, and uh, I'm thrilled I did. And finally, since WVUA 23 is based in Tuscaloosa, what are your predictions for Alabama this season? I've really uh, agonized uh, over this for a long time, uh, but uh, as I uh, landed uh, early Monday morning, I, I finally uh, decided that I would do what I've done now since 2008 and pick Alabama to win the SEC. So I, I haven't been right every year, but I've been pretty close most years. I think you just made Phyllis and Jim and a couple of those other callers very happy with that. We are so thankful for your time, and you really have changed the whole radio show into TV show element, and now it's kind of crazy, but kids are going to be saying they want to be the next Paul Feinbaum. Great stuff there from Paul. What do you think about his prediction? Hey, you never know. You gotta, if you keep picking them, they got to be right eventually, right? There you go. There you go. we got a lot more coming up on Sports Sunday, including... A caught on camera moment you have to see. That's in our favorite things after the break. Hey, we're back with our favorite things. And hey, don't get us wrong. Sharks are not our favorite things. It's Australian surfer Mick Fanning. Watch this. A shark attacks him on camera while trying to catch a wave in a competition. Check that out. And Fanning said he punched the shark several times before it finally swam off. He suffered only minor injuries, but wow. Good work, Mick. That's pretty amazing. Now, hey, today is National Ice Cream Day. If you're on Twitter, hashtag National Ice Cream Day. It would have also been Stuart Scott's 50th birthday. He was a big fan of ice cream, so everyone's saying celebrate by tweeting your pictures of yourself eating ice cream for Stuart Scott and for National Ice Cream Day. So that's what we're doing. A little ice cream. What's your favorite flavor? Not vanilla like you. I prefer Vanilla. chocolates, actually. Everybody have a good week. Good night. Good night.